Hey guys, how's it going? Today we are starting our in-ground annual planting. There are a few areas in our garden where we like to mass plant annuals because it's the best way to get the most amount of color for the entire season. So today we are planting sparkling amethyst. I don't know, we might get more done than this, but we're gonna start here. I don't have a ton of time this morning. We've got 80 sparkling amethyst superbina. The color here is so amazing. I think the amount of white that this flower has makes the, the flower just glow. It just shows up, it pops, and I love purple because it brings a cooling note to the garden. Now we're out here in the South Garden, which is a full sun area until our trees get some size, but this is where they're all gonna go right here a great big mass of them right in front of this hedge of limelight prime hydrangeas which we planted here this will be their third season i think we planted them kind of late ish that first season so last year was the first year that they really kind of got going uh, so i think that the bank of white blooms mixed with the sparkling amethyst is going to be so so pretty so one of the biggest benefits to me about superbina this type is that we don't have to spray them for budworm, which we do have to spray super tunias and super bells for that to keep the budworms off, which they eat the buds of your plants. So you'll have a nice green leaf canopy, but no blooms. We don't have to worry about that with these. We don't have to spray these with anything. Um, so we just make sure to fertilize them on a weekly basis and they just go for it all season. So the spacing on the tag, I lost a bloom. Spacing says max 14 inches. I do know that they get much bigger than that. In fact, I had a little stand of these planted on the other side of the South Garden last year, but I do kind of want to plant them tight uh, in a way because, you know, if you're planting 80 plants, maybe we won't lose a single one, but sometimes you'll lose one or maybe two out of that many plants. So if you've got them kind of tightly planted, then they, you don't notice. They just kind of take over and look amazing. So I think what I'm gonna do, because I've never planted this space before, this is the first time, I uh, want to lay them out, see how they best fit. And then we've got our auger here. We'll aug all the holes, throw some biotone in and get them in the ground. Guys, I cannot wait to see what this looks like once they fill in. I did not use all 80 plants. I'm glad I planned for that because as I was starting to set them out, I thought we're not gonna have enough to fill up this area. But I think in the end I used 68, which that's a tremendous amount of plants, but we have um, a couple other projects where we can utilize the extras. Uh, we did three rows and I'm not sure the exact spacing. I just kind of eyeballed it. And then, you know, the next row back I did in between. I got my pants a little wet. We got some rain last night. It was really pleasant. You know, this whole area out here is native soil. And then we layered a bunch of wood chips out here a couple years ago. And then we've added compost last year and this year. And it's nice and soft. I don't even need a kneeling pad out here, except to maybe protect my pants. <laughs> so we are gonna have to run a couple of drip lines. I don't think we're gonna have to run one for the front row because I think they'll get enough overspray from the sprinklers. So we're gonna start by not running one to that row and then we'll just watch it. And then we'll run one right alongside this row of plants and one right alongside that row. And I think it should be perfect and it's gonna look 
spectacular. I cannot wait. You know, the thing about super beanas, and I'm not sure if I already mentioned this today, so I apologize if I have, but these newer varieties, the super beanas, rather than the standard verbenas, they don't cycle out of bloom like the old verbenas do. Um, so, you know, with the older verbenas, you plant them, they look pretty because you buy them usually with flowers on them, and then they kind of push more blooms and then cycle out, and you don't see any blooms for a couple of weeks. Then you might see some more blooms later on. These don't do that. They're just in color all season long. Uh, so I really appreciate that. I mean, if you're going to the trouble of planting an annual plant for color, you want it to have color all season long. Uh, so that's one thing I love, love about these. Okay, so this is an example of mass planting in the landscape. Now we're gonna take the same variety and mix it with a few other things, a few other different types of flowers, and we're gonna go plant the west side urns. All right, guys, so we're on the west side. These are the urns we're gonna plant. You can see that I attempted to plant bulbs in them, and it's kind of comical because we got one and two blooms per pot. And every other container I put bulbs in this last fall did great. So they're a white parrot. We're going to cut them and enjoy them. And I'm just gonna leave the bulbs in here. We put fresh soil in here last fall. Uh, so I'll just leave those in there, plant right over the top of them. We're also going to be replacing all the drip. So I'm going to be doing that before we um, haul off and plant these because it's a lot easier to do it when the containers are empty. We have really hard water, so the emitters tend to get plugged up. And sometimes for containers, it's just best to start with fresh. So let's go make a little arrangement out of all these tulips here quick. There we go. We can add a few other little things to this and enjoy these inside. And that way we can get some pretty things. Let's go look at the plants because this is gonna be gorgeous. Look at these. A bunch of purple and white. It's gonna be so gorgeous. We've got a purple fountain grass. I don't think I did a centerpiece last year. Or maybe I did the unplugged pink and it didn't pan out kind of how I was hoping it would. Uh, so I wanted to put something in there that was, you know, super striking. And you know, guys know how big and beautiful those get. Then we've got diamond frost euphorbia. We're gonna use the sparkling amethyst again and super junior Bordeaux. So I'm gonna prep all of our drip right here before we go over to the urns. Whatever I do, I just wanna make sure each pot has the same amount of emitters. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got plugs, I'm gonna put those, you can see right there. I'm gonna put those on one end like this. And then on the other end, we'll put our straight coupler, which looks like that. That way we can attach it to the quarter inch black poly, the solid poly that's running up into the pots. So that one's prepped and ready to go. I gotta do that three more times. So I've got my new one right here. You can see where the old one is right here. We're gonna clip this off right below the emitter. Oh, I need to cut a little more than that. Oh, <laughs> did you see that? Oh. I just flipped a bunch of soil right in my face. <laughs> okay, then we're gonna take our coupler. This is why it's good to leave a a pretty lengthy piece of the black tubing for us anyway so that you can get to it easier ours is starting to get a little short at this point there we go fresh perfect now i gotta do that three more times pots are prepped and i'm ready to plant this is the layout right here we're gonna do the purple fountain grass in the center and then i want the bordeaux to be like front and center i think and then we're gonna go superbina diamond frost Bordeaux, Superbina, Diamond Frost. I'm gonna put some slow release fertilizer in the soil and get it done. Well, it's looking beautiful and it is so rare when you get to see your tulips in peak, full, beautiful bloom at the same time you're planting super tunias. I don't know if we'll ever have the opportunity to see that again, so I'm really enjoying it so much. And you can see that in this area we're going with pinks, purples, and whites, and a little bit of chartreuse for the most part, uh, because I want it to be a very cool, uh, toned garden space. And I just love how these containers turned out. They're just so, so pretty. So we've got the centerpiece here, and then just two of every other thing, like I showed you in the layout. 
pretty much exactly the layout there. Um, I'm going to have to work on, I'm going to get some landscape staples to kind of pop the the uh, drip tube. It can be a little squirrely. It's a little cool out this morning as well. So once it warms up, it'll be a little bit more flexible. Um, now, the only thing in this area that needs some attention, which Aaron's going to be working on here, uh, is to tie up the arbs. You can see that we had some issues and I don't know... I don't know if it's a pruning thing or what, but we got some pretty heavy wet snows and then every time uh, it rains and they get a little bit of moisture on them and they get heavy and they start to splay out like this. So we got some tree rope, which is a black twine that's really soft and it doesn't damage your trees. And he's just do, gonna do it a ring like around the interior of the branches just to kind of hold them up together. Hopefully to give the branches, the wood time to harden and train them up. So anyway, that's what's going on with our our kind of row of arbs here. They're looking a little wild, but not for long. And you guys, that is it for today. Super happy to have those two. Those seem like big projects to me. Like I usually have a list of projects I want to make sure to get done. Um, and that's two check marks off. We're going to be working on the areas underneath these maple trees here very soon. They're all cleared out and ready to go. And we've got our plants here. So that actually might be what you see next. Who knows? So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And we will see you in the next one. Bye.